Hello, I'm Dr. Danen Umadevan. I'm the interventional cardiologist with Columbia Asia Iskandar Putri. Every year, more than a million Malaysians suffer from a heart attack. Out of that number, about 500,000 of them die, and half of that number die suddenly. So I'm joined here today by Mr. Farhan, a patient of mine who suffered uh, an acute heart attack. So Mr. Farhan, yes, sir. what were your symptoms when you first presented to Columbia Asia this kind of a dream? First, uh, I feel like chest pain mm -hmm. and also uh, short and yeah. yeah. So Mr. Farhan presented with the typical presentation of an acute heart attack, which is central crushing chest pain, which may radiate to the arms or jaw, and usually the chest pain is associated with nausea, sweating, and even vomiting. However, in women, sometimes the presentation may be slightly different. They may present with just epigastric pain or stomach disturbance or just back pain. So Mr. Farhan, how do you feel now once you've undergone the intervention? When after treatment, I get, uh, I feel like more comfort, also can get uh, daily activities. Yes, so prompt treatment is very important in an acute heart attack because the earlier you present and the earlier the diagnosis is made, the best treatment can be offered which is primary angioplasty and therefore the outcome is better. So patients like Farhan who are very young in their 30s can continue on to be productive uh, and contribute to the economy of this country. Now, Mr. Farhan, we will shortly do a reenactment of your acute heart attack. Don't worry, it's just a reenactment. You won't have a second heart. We are now in front of the emergency department of Columbia Asia Iskandar Putri. And shortly, we will start the reenactment of the acute heart attack case. The treatment for an acute heart attack begins with the patient arriving from the ambulance and entering the emergency door. This is very important in the concept of door to balloon. Door meaning the time at which the patient passes through the emergency door. Once the patient is in the emergency department, a brief and detailed history will be taken. This is to uh, make sure that the patient is indeed suffering from an acute uh, chest pain episode. An ECG will be done to confirm the diagnosis of an acute heart attack. The patient will be given necessary treatment for an acute heart attack, which would include blood thinning medications, oxygen and even painkiller medications to reduce his pain. In the emergency department, an echocardiogram will be performed to determine the patient's uh, heart function prior to the angiogram. Once the patient has been transferred to the cat lab, the patient will be attended to by my well-trained uh, cat lab team. They are like an F1 team and they each know what to do. So we have over there our CVT, two circulating nurses, our radiographer uh, and the scrub nurse as well as the third circulating nurse. So each of them know what exactly they have to do. Like for instance, the scrub nurse will uh, help to drape the patients, the CVT will attach the ECT leads and the BP uh, electrodes, and the circulating nurses will help me with mixing any medications which I need. The radiographer will help to man the II machine so that we have the perfect view to view the artery uh, which is involved in the acute heart attack. So the procedure starts with obtaining a radial access. And inserting the sheet through the uh, hand which is part of the radial access. Here we have done the diagnostic angiogram and we have identified the culprit vessel. So following this, we will pass a guiding catheter and a wire uh, down the affected vessel. We will then suck out the clot in the affected vessel. This is then followed by balloon angioplasty and finally stenting. So once the guiding catheter is in place, a coronary wire is uh, placed into the affected uh, vessel and a balloon is uh, inflated to open up the uh, culprit vessel. Once the vessel has been opened, the balloon is removed and following that, 
uh, stent is placed. The purpose of the stent is to maintain the patency of the vessel. This is an example of the balloon which is used in coronary angioplasty. Inflate. Okay, deflate. This is an example of a coronary stent. Inflate. Once inflated, the stent will be embedded in the vessel wall. Once the balloon has been inflated, the coronary stent balloon is then deflated. The balloon is removed and the stent will remain in the vessel. This is how it appears. This is a video clip showing the insertion of the balloon in the culprit vessel. Following balloon angioplasty, a stent is positioned in the culprit vessel. This is the picture following stand implantation. As you can see now, flow is restored to the whole vessel. Once the process has been done, uh, the catheter is removed and the patient will be transferred to the coronary care unit. So I'd like to emphasize again the door to balloon time. And uh, basically door means the time at which the patient comes in through the emergency department and balloon meaning the time at which the balloon is inflated in the carpet vessel. In Colombia, Asia, Iskandar Putri, we have managed to achieve a mean door to balloon time of around 60 minutes. This is better than the international standard of 90 minutes. This is very important to ensure that the patients have the best possible